as a people are in deep trouble. We have the political persons, city councilors, mayors, others. We have our mayor in Newark, Mr. Cory Booker, and brilliant people that are around him. We have, for the first time, a black man in the White House with a beautiful first family. That's a beautiful example of what our family life should look like. It doesn't mean they don't have struggle, but how beautiful it is that they work through their difficulties to remain a family. And they have these two lovely daughters and we were inspired to go to the polls, man. Like never before. I remember February, I think it was 2007, 2008 it was. And I was praising this young man. And I was telling us that uh, don't look to him to be the black president. Well, that ain't his role. He's not the black president. He's the American president. And there is a difference. See? We voted for him. Yes, he's ours. But in our voting for brother, for us to think now he's going to turn his attention and reparations is going to be on the table. <laughs> We're going to get our reparation now. We got our brother in the White House. It ain't necessarily so. <laughs> he's not going to do that which upsets white folk that voted for him and he's got to be so careful as he walks this tightrope he can come out all the way for gays and lesbians he can no he can but to be an advocate for our problems would make the white vote say aha uh -huh. See, he let his blackness out over the gates thing. When he misspoke and said that white boy was stupid, acted stupidly. Then like the turtle, he had to pull his head back in under the shell. Oh, hell. I done upset these folk. So let's have a beer in the rose garden. Now, you know, we may laugh, but that brother is in a difficult spot. Now, I'm going to close this. <laughs> Rather quickly, but as you look at the suffering of the masses of our people, and you see our children dropping out of school, and it appears that they don't want knowledge, wrong. They have curious minds. They do not want the porridge that belongs to an enemy educational system that is rooted in the idea of white supremacy. That idea, that idea has run its course. And the light of education, which is the torchlight of civilization of white people is going out. And as that light goes out, 
Like if the sunlight were to go out, the planets would collide. When the light of your education begins to dim and to die out, then the institutions that were kept begin to clash with each other and the house gets into disorder. And the disorder is leading to the fall of America. And our brother Barack campaign to be Pharaoh and he got it Pharaoh meaning you are going to manage the affairs of Egypt not the affairs of the children of Israel so there has to be among us qualified black leadership that will attend to the needs of our people because the government is not capable of sufficing our needs. Now, you see our children killing each other in the streets. This is not an accident. This is not just happening in Newark or New York or Philadelphia or Washington or Chicago or Detroit. It's happening throughout the Caribbean now. It's happening in Africa. It's happening in Bermuda. The same thing that we see that we're dealing with with our young people, they're dealing with this all over the world. I'm sure it's similar to this in Haiti, Dr. Daniels. So our people must not be deceived because we have a black president. Before he was elected, he was selected. And none of us were in the room when he was selected. We do not know the forces that selected him and what they had in mind that he may never have known what was in their mind. The enemy knows the time. And the enemy knows what we should be doing in this time. But the enemy wants to deceive us. And make us believe that because we have a black president. That we're living in a post-racial America. And everything is going to be alright. The hell it is. And that's what I came to say today. Whether you ever hear me again or not. Our communities have become toxic waste. And those in high places are planning to remove the toxic waste. And while we flitter and live this frivolous, foolish life, seeking pleasure, from our bodies and pleasure from the bodies of others and seeking uh, the to be famous and wealthy in this world to be used by the powers to make our people think that if you go to school and work hard you too can be successful that's a lie I don't give a damn how many of you go to school and work hard. They select a few out of the mass to deceive the rest that this house is not your house. And you are going to have to think about a house of your own because white America, listen to me good man, cannot support you any longer 
white America cannot give jobs to her millions of unemployed, much less ours. Did you hear me? Elijah Muhammad told us in the 60s we should pool our resources and get farmland because there is no freedom without land. You remember those teachings? He said that uh, the time of separation had come and that we are going to have to think about building a nation of our own. You, in the 60s, you were ready to say, it's nation time. You don't say that no more. Because you have been deceived into thinking that inclusion into this is your salvation. This that you want to be included in has no future. None. None. 